I you love do. this guy. You do. Alan Sinai, who is the chief global economist for Decision Economics. Also, Mark Lampkin, who's the CEO and chief investment strategist at Lampkin Wealth Management. And gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good Mark, I, I want to start off talking a little bit about the market's reaction or non-reaction at this point to the news that's coming out of Washington, which makes it seem less and less likely that we're going to see some sort of a deal reached before that August 2nd deadline. Is the market waiting to panic because it thinks something will still happen, or is it not going to panic because it's not worried about this one way or the other? Well, I, I think there's a tug of war going on right now. I mean, there's solid comp company earnings, there's solid balance sheets, and I, I think the market is telling us that there's no chance of, of default, that interest payments are going to be paid. There may be delay. There's no chance of massive defaults. I think the market is trying to weigh in on this downgrade because I do think there's a 98% chance of a downgrade. City Group come out and said that. And I think there's that tug of war and the markets is kind of balancing those earnings with this bad macroeconomic or macroeconomic in the U.S. downgrade. So I think there's just simply a tug of war right now. Okay, Alan, what do you think's happening? And as somebody who's been following this for a long time, do you think the odds are that a deal gets passed, that a deal doesn't get passed? And what do you think it all means for the broader markets? You know, uh, some sort of deal, uh, despite all the chaos that's going on, uh, even if it slips beyond August 2, because there's some flexibility in terms of how that gets handled. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to get downgraded anyway because we are fiscally irresponsible. We have been for a long time. And even without the debt ceiling, I believe we would have been downgraded given the way we run our finances in Washington and the process and the outlook for the economy. Because remember, the denominator of the deficit GDP and debt GDP ratio, that denominator, in our view, is going to be very disappointing not just here, but around the world. If that's true, what's, what plan then would you get behind? Or do, you're saying it doesn't matter. I'm looking at a Citigroup report out just last night saying that they believe there's a 98% chance of a U.S. downgrade to AA, basically no matter what. Oh, that's what I think and have thought. And I think we'll get more than one downgrade. Uh, it's not going to be the end of the world. Other countries have been downgraded. There's nervousness. Uh, it, if the economy is very weak and inflation starts to come down, the Fed stays at zero interest rates. Fixed income, treasury yields don't go up that much. Remember, they're very low now, so we can live with that. But where you really see the crisis and the edge of the crisis is in the declining dollar, not against the euro in the end, but the declining dollar against lots of other currencies of countries who are running their business a lot better than we are and have been. Countries that we used to call have-nots, but now are haves. And you also see it in the stock market. That's where you're going to see most of the damage. And the edge of the crisis, I think, we are seeing happening right now. We are not coming to grips with it. So I think it's really over time with ebbs and flows. I think it's going to get worse. If, if the default comes, and as you've said, there are a lot of people who have said they think a default, or not a default, they think a downgrade is happening one way or the other. It doesn't matter what deal or if a deal is reached. Does that mean the market doesn't care? Because at this point, it's really not reacting, especially the Treasury markets, where you might expect to see a reaction. Yeah, like you that. know, you know, it's a lot like Japan, unfortunately. Uh, our situation and the policies we have used to deal with it, which have not worked, let's face it, a trillion one fiscal policy, all that easing of monetary policy, look at the results. Maybe it would have been a lot worse. I'm sure it would have been, but that doesn't matter now. Look where we are and how are we handling it. Uh, we are really kind of lost. And so it's a lot like Japan. Uh, are you suggesting we could be in for 10 or 20 years? So? You, know, you know, on our, just looking at the numbers, we're already a half, a half decade into a lost decade. I hate to say it. I hate to be so gloomy. Uh, but we're already uh, five years. If you look at the numbers in the U.S., we've had a terrible situation now for f five or six years. And what studies of history and other countries that go through financial crises show is that for five or 10 years after those crises, for reasons as yet not fully understood, these countries have a tough time. We're in for a tough time for a long time. Mark, when you hear well, things well, like that, do you think that if we're in for a tough time for a long time, that maybe the stock market is not the best place to be? Well, let's not forget. I mean, S&P earnings are, are going to be near record levels. Multinationals with, uh, with the declining dollar, I mean, earnings are solid. Balance sheets are good. Corporate America right now is doing okay. So I, I, I don't buy necessarily to the doom and gloom. Do we have issues? Certainly. And if you look at sovereign def or downgrades uh, over the last 20 years, 10-year government bonds of those countries, only ri the, the yields only raise about 0 0.03, 0 0.05. So we're going to have to live with double A. I think that's, a, it, that, that's all but done. These guys are simply going to have to close some of the loopholes, raise a little revenue, 
put a significant, just, we don't actually have to have solution right now. Just resolution, and corporate America will like that certainty. Get that behind us, and let's get back to jobs. But it's not all bad right now in corporate America. Just a little bit of leadership out of Washington. We'll get back to jobs, and this, and this economy will get back on track. Okay. Uh, Alan, Alan, what's yeah. GDP going to be today? Uh, we're at uh, one to one and a half percent. Uh, one to one and a half. Yeah, it's, it's going to be uh, pretty sick on the consumer side. We're going to have a negative number in the next year. I doubt it, but it's uh, what we call a growth recession. I think uh, I think uh, the Fed and I think uh, Washington be disappointed. And this is going on around the world on GDP, and that's one of the problems on, on the debt eurozone debt problem. They won't make their targets because the GDP numbers just aren't going to right. come around, and the the, the, the restraint that comes out of fiscal austerity is so extreme uh -huh. and lender conditionality that that hurts the economy. And it's, it's almost like a death spiral. So we, we just got to go through some more trouble before we work our way out of it. The earnings are great, but the stock market's going to wonder about earnings a year or so from now, not just these wonderful second quarter earnings that and, we've and, had. And we're trying to deal with it. We're going to do spending cuts, and, and some people want spending cuts and tax increases, which is they're both going to dampen our pro I mean, it's, that's austerity plus a tax increase. That's like a double whammy if we finally get that here. It's, it's a rock and a hard place. We unfortunately have let us, we have two problems. The answer is to solve them simultaneously, and I'm not seeing any uh, real uh, clever thinking on growing the economy faster, getting more jobs, and cutting the deficit at the same time. There are ways to do that, but they're not anywhere on the mainstream docket in the discussion in Washington. So to fix the deficits and debt, and the markets are going to take us to task if we don't, you end up restraining the economy. <laughs> to grow the economy, on fiscal side, you got to increase the deficits and debt. We've tried that. That didn't work for various reasons. And monetary policy hasn't worked. Now, you know, we might get lucky, and because of the lags, the private sector might spontaneously combust. We might start to buy more cars and houses, uh, lags, pent-up demands. But, you know, I, w I wish I could no, say I thought that would stuff. happen. Yeah, uh, no, we're talking about this stuff right. every day. Yeah, I don't think we're going to spontaneously combust. So uh, we've got, I think, I hope the country will figure its way out of it. The fact that we are dealing with it is one of the benefits of this debt ceiling lever yeah. that the Tea Party right. is forcing us to deal with. And in that process well, and in the doom and gloom that I hear from you and that I'm talking about, we may then wake up as a country and figure our way out of it. Yeah. I hope so. We hope so, too. I Alan, Mark, now. gentlemen, thank you both very much. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks for that. Joe's been giving me funny looks. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just saying around. thank you, yeah, Alan. Thank for, you, yeah, thank maybe you, we did you. get something. Home Depot mogul hammers Obama over okay. fat cat talk. Do you see this?